I'm going to try this. <clears throat> Boy, hold on. It's just an industrial uh, part of Tempe. And riding around has been a blast. Like, so much fun. So Way much more fun than I, than I thought. Um, but I'm in this parking lot. I don't know. That's the interesting thing about all these businesses. They don't have... Um, it's not obvious what they are from the outside. It's just like this featureless commercial building. And they're all really pretty. Um, I want to say they're, they're simple. They're, they're, very, they're, they're really simple in their, their design. Because um, they're not trying to look... Uh, they're not trying to be fashionable. They're not trying to be um, attractive. They're just trying to be a, a, a commercial, right? economic. Um, and that, that, that makes them minimal in a way, but not in that, that kind of... Um, that architecture philosophy way. Minimalism is weird because it's also, you could say something's minimalist by just not investing money into it. You know, you can make it cheap. The, the reason why someone might be manufacturing something minimal is because they just don't want to put money into it, right? So th that's why it may, making it sound like you're being fashionable when you're really not. You just don't want, you just don't want to invest money into the thing that you're selling, right? I was gonna say they're minimal, but that, that has a whole, that, that says quite a lot about the buildings that I'm not trying to say. But also, there's these huge, empty parking lots. They're just wonderful. I could, I could bike around. I could just bike, just do laps over and over and over, over and over again. If you want to be a good philosopher, <laughs> if you want to be a good philosopher. You, you, ha you have to engage with someone, right? You have to. You can't be a philosopher alone. Right? You can't do it for yourself. You have to be able to say something that someone else can understand. So at some point, you have to make contact with another human being. But how how often do you need to make content or contact with with someone? Do you need to talk to someone every day? Do you need to talk to someone every decade? I don't know. Yeah, but my favorite philosopher, Wittgenstein, published basically nothing his whole life. I mean, he, he, he taught lectures and he wrote a lot of notes. So he's engaging with people on like a very one-to-one -one basis. But he didn't, he didn't make anything for the whole world. Um, and it, 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 is, 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 isn't that an amazing way to live? Because he, right, he got into philosophy right around 1910. And he worked until he died in 1951 or something. And um, when he died, he had a, just a ton of notes, like 20,000 pages of notes, and he gave them to his, his students, his friends. He just gave them to someone, and he said, publish them. Just publish them however you see fit. And these people just automatically had a career, <laughs> right? They automatically had an academic career because they just had this, this treasure of documents that they could, they could do whatever they wanted with. And for the next, all the way up until like 19... 80 something they slowly parsed th these notes out in books um, and I think I read even just a few years ago they found they found more notes from Wittgenstein they're just finding these notes um, one of the books that was published for, that was from Wittgenstein's notes was called Zettel and it was they just they don't even know what it was they they found a, like a bucket with notes in it and they're like was this his trash can was this what, what they and they published it anyway because uh, it, it, it it's it's valuable. Um, maybe it's not the best notes he ever wrote, but they just published it anyway. Uh, but that, you realize that was, that's a hundred years. It's a hundred year career. It's, and it's beyond his life. And he didn't even see it reach people. This is such a weird way to work. I mean, if I'm a social, if, if, if I'm like a business person or if I'm a writer or someone who's social as a, as a profession, I'm interacting with people every day. But these, these philosophers who are work, it's, it's, it's no doubt it's social work, cause at the very least because you have to write, but also because you have to talk about people. It's social work, and they're writing over centuries. They're, 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 they're sending a message, and the message gets received a hundred years later by who knows who. Right? I, I find that incredible. Anyway, yeah. Uh, but you can put that in con like I like blogs are a modern phenomenon, right? And it's so much different, right? It's so much different from Kripke or Wittgenstein, who had these centuries-long units of, of writing, uh, where blog, people who blog are, 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 are doing this every day. And I like this. I, I like law, you know, uh, and I read law blogs, and there's this defense attorney who writes, a um, uh, defense attorney named uh, Scott Greenfield, and he writes a blog called Simple Justice, and he, he makes, like, two or three posts a day, and each of them are, like, two or three pages. So he's posting, like, He's writing like maybe seven pages a day and he just like I'm pretty I'm pretty sure he's a busy guy he can't invest a lot into this so he's probably just waking up just cranking out these papers publishing them and he, he can't even afford to edit them right I'm so, I'm so impressed by that 
And it's the, it's the total opposite. I, it's the total opposite of how these philosophers work, right? I mean, Scott, Scott Greenfield, in order to have that kind of output, he, he's basically repeating himself every day, right? He only cares about, like, four things, and he just set, talks about the same... He just says the same thing that he said yesterday. It's just he thought about it a different way. Maybe there's some news story he thought about it in, in, in the context of. He's saying the same things every day. And if you, it, if you think about how, like, a philosopher's working, a philosopher, they, 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 they probably just get a piece of content and then they hang on to it for like a, a decade, and they just keep they they keep thinking about that content, they keep examining it, they keep re-examining it, and after they've just utterly destroyed this content, they they make a book on it, right? You don't you don't write on the same content twice, or there'd be no point if you're just trying to deliver content. You don't write it, you don't write it twice. But if you're if you're a blogger, you you write just no you you're guaranteed to write. You're going to write every day. You're going to write constantly. You better, may, you better hope you're going to get more content, but you don't know. And if you don't have more content, then you got to write. you just got to write anyway, because what's valuable is the conversation, not the, the freshness of the content, not, not something new to say. It's just continuous dialogue. And you get better at dialogue, and you also interface with people. And there's this, when, you, when, you, when you interface with people more, you're, there's this flow of, of understanding that, 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 that's, um, that's increased. And that's, that's really valuable. That's valuable for everyone. And uh, oh, I know what I can talk about. I found content. I <laughs> I'm verbally blogging. I'm just going to talk until I find content. Uh, but I got to work, and I uh, you know I put my headphones in, and I, I sit on a couch, and I just I, I start coding, and uh, I you know I was coding, but really what I was doing was I was I was thinking. You, you, you know I have to figure out what's going to end up, what letters are going to become the code, uh, before I actually do it. And it's this really productive work, but it was it was very much like this. It's just like just angry, you know, just sitting there, <laughs> just sitting there hoping the thoughts come to me. And uh, it's been like that lately. It's been like that with uh, my productive work is I, a lot of thinking. And that's, that, that makes me uncomfortable. It, it, it makes me uncomfortable because I want to be a productive person. Um, you know, I have, um, that's just, that's just true. I know some people, some people don't really care to be productive. Some, some people are lazy. Some people just want to have fun. I, I, I want to be productive. And uh, so what, what I would what, what I would have thought is productivity means you wake up and you just you just work for uh, an extended period of time like eight hours and you do that every day. Um, but what is what is work, right? I never thought about that. I never thought well what what counts as work? And now I do freelance, so it's 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 very ambiguous as to what counts as work. Um, but I, I don't I don't know what's work anymore. <laughs> I would I would think. It, 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 you know, if I'm going to do eight hours of coding, and I, I I wake up and I that means I'm sitting behind a computer, right? I can't code if I'm not behind a computer. Uh, but what if I have um, what if I don't have anything to code? I mean, what if the, the idea of what to code hasn't come to me yet? Then I don't have anything to type. But then am I am I working? Am I not working? Because I'm not typing anything. Um, but at the same time, I'm 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 being productive. Well, I don't know because I'm not really I'm not getting any closer to where I'm trying to go. But but I can't. There's, there's, there's no actual thing I could do that would bring me closer. But I still feel like I'm making progress in the sense that I'm, I'm thinking very hard about it. And I know, I know there's a solution that's going to come to me at some point. So it's, 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 it's this weird sort of silent meditative work where it's, it's, just, it's just thinking. And then it doesn't really feel like work. Then I feel embarrassed because I feel like I'm not doing anything. Uh, but, but, you know, sure enough, um, I've been, I mean, my actual output has been in- incredible lately. Um, and it hasn't been voluminous, but the actual things that I've made have been, been, been great. Um, and then, so then I don't know, what, how, how do I make more great things? How do I make a greater volume of great things? Uh, I don't know, I don't know how to do it. Um, and I, I, was talking to, uh, I was talking to a friend of mine um, about this kind of problem, and I, I use this analogy, if, you know, if you're in a room and the door is shut, and you have no concept of how to open a door. You don't know how a handle works. You can't identify the handle as the thing that you need to turn. If you don't have any of that knowledge, then what do you what do you do? If it's your job to leave the room, you're, you're just you're stuck. There's no labor of leaving the room. At, at some point, by some miracle, some idea is going to come into your head as to what to do. Or maybe it'll be an accident. Maybe you'll hit the knob or something and it'll open. You're just you're just you're just stuck. Um, I don't. That seems to describe quite a lot of life. You're just you're just stuck until you're not stuck, and you don't know how. You're going to get unstuck, and you, you can't invest in getting unstuck. You're just, you're just there until you're not there anymore. Um, yeah, and that seems true about quite a lot, but it's also very, I don't know, it's very, it's very religious. I mean, um, 
it's, it's just always like that. You're, you're always just so vulnerable in that, in that sense. And I'm almost starting to think that what it means to do intellectual work is the exact, is the exact opposite of what it means to do work. Work means your, your body is moving in some way. Maybe, maybe you're not digging a ditch, but maybe you're, you're writing something, or maybe you're typing, and you're, you're doing these very manual things. Maybe you're, maybe you're making a cup of coffee. It, it, it's, manu- it, it, it's your body in use. That even very intelligent people who, who are very, um, you know, they have very high school jobs, even they are doing manual work because their body needs to be somewhere doing something. Uh, and, and you put that in contrast with real intellectual work where it's just, you can't, you're just waiting for the idea to come to you and you can't do anything about that. It seems like that's where the division is. And if I'm trying to, if I'm trying to maximize my sort of intellectual work, then it's going to come it's gonna at the cost of real work. All right, I'm going to call it. Yeah, it's 18 minutes.